today's topic is about what is free radicals and how it is generated in our body so basically free radical that is reactive molecule and it is very dangerous to our body but sometime it is needed for important reaction in our body so in detail of this free radical and its generation that we will look in this video so first that is free radicals are particles with an unpaired electron spinning around the outer orbit of the nucleus normally this around the nucleus the paired electron is moving but if it is unpaired then what happen this unpaired electron have the tendency to breach equilibrium and for that equilibrium it will plug the electron from the nearest intact molecule but when it is taking electron from the intact molecule this intact molecule may further convert it into the free radical so free radical is generally represented by a superscript dot when it is written simple hydroxyl group but if you are writing that free radical of hydroxyl radical then you have to mark a dot suppose over that hydroxyl group so that is written as a superscript dot oxidation reaction ensures the molecular oxygen is completely reduced to water but sometime there is a always some amount of incomplete reduction of oxygen and that is one of the biggest reason for free radical generation in our body so basically superoxide anion radical which is mostly generated from the oxygen how basically over that oxygen electron is attached and making superoxide anion further this superoxide anion is converted into the h2o2 mostly with the superoxide dismutase enzyme so for that electron and proton is added further h2o2 will be destroyed and it is converted into the water molecule but during that time electron and proton is added but in this reaction sometime hydroxyl radical will be generated and that also need to be destroyed with the help of electron and hydro proton h plus ion so that is how free radical is generated so product of partial reduction of oxygen are highly reactive and can damage the living system so all these are basically produced from the oxygen so they are also called a reactive oxygen species short form that is ros so that is about the free radical so the following are the members of this group of free radical or reactive oxygen species first one superoxide anion radical that we have seen how it is generated 10 raised to minus 6 seconds that is half life a very short lifespan of the free radical for the hydroperoxyl radical that is one second half life hydrogen peroxide it has few minutes half life but sometime it is not considered free radical so it is not written with a superscript dot hydroxyl radical that is most important very short half life tends to minus 9 seconds lipid peroxide radical 1 second singlet oxygen tends to minus 6 seconds so lipid peroxide radical that is generated from the fatty acid and it is also one type of important free radical nitric oxide it has 7 minute half life peroxynitrite it has a 2 seconds half life and these are called reactive nitrogen species so these all are the important part of the free radical out of these h2o2 and singlet oxygen are not free radical and so they do not have superscript dot but they are extremely reactive so are they are included in the group of the free radical now next important characteristic of this reactive oxygen species that already we have said extremely reactive second short lifespan generation of new reactive oxygen species by chain reaction this free radical immediately react with the nearby molecule and may be convert that molecule into the another free radical so that chain reaction may go on so damage to the various tissue by damaging of intact molecule and that is very dangerous for this free radical further exactly how it is generated first that is mitochondria so they are constantly produced during the normal oxidation of foodstuff due to the leakage in electron transport chain inside the mitochondria so inside the mitochondria when etc is going on electron is transported from complex one then complex 1 and 2 to complex 3 and 4 so what happened during that time electron transportation if electron is leak and that is combined with the oxygen then this free radical will be generated so about 1 to 4 percent of oxygen taken up in the body is converted into the free radical and that is one of the important site for the free radical generation in our body sometime some enzyme such as xanthin oxidase and aldehyde oxidase form superoxide anion radical or hydrogen peroxide and that is also important site for the free radical as well as h2o2 formation so normally xanthin oxidase is needed for the conversion of 
particular purine into the xanthine and uric acid formation but during that time h2o2 is generated so that is another site of the free radical generation already we have discussed that electron transport chain electron is transported from complex 1 2 then 3 and 4 during that time electron is leak and combined with the oxygen and free radical will be generated now other important reaction which is involved is free radical generation that is NADPH oxidase and it is produced by the inflammatory cell or the white blood cell so that is neutrophils eosinophils monocyte and macrophage they are producing superoxide anion by process of respiratory burst during phagocytosis phagocytosis that is important defense mechanism of our body to protect our cells or our body from the bacterial infection so that is important essential reaction or defense mechanism of our body but this superoxide is converted further into the hydrogen peroxide and then to the hypochlorous acid with the help of two enzymes superoxide dismutase and myeloperoxidase and the superoxide and hypochlorous ion which are generated in this respiratory burst are the final effector of the bactericidal action bactericidal means to killing the bacteria it is important essential mechanism for the free radical generation so free radical is needed to produce by these inflammatory cells so this with purposefully free radical is generated inside our body by this inflammatory cell to kill the bacteria so basically how it is occurring so white blood cell particularly macrophage will produce free radical with the help of NADPH oxidase so this free radical is generated this free radical is further converted to the hydrogen peroxide with the help of SOD superoxide dismutase this H2O2 is further converted to the hypochlorous acid with the help of myeloperoxidase enzyme this hypochlorous acid that is the main effector of killing of the bacteria so bacteria is killed sometime this superoxide anion that is also directly kill the bacteria now for the activity of this NADPH oxidase basically apart from oxygen NADPH is needed and this NADPH is provided from the HMP sun pathway the key enzyme of this HMP sun pathway which is producing NADPH that is G6PD that is glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase that you have to remember so that is correlation with the carbohydrate metabolism or minor pathway of carbohydrate metabolism that is HMP sun pathway so that is how free radical is generated by the macrophage for the purpose of phagocytosis and kill the bacteria. Now next that is along with the activation of macrophage a consumption of oxygen by the cell is increased drastically and so it is called a respiratory burst. So why this name is given because of excessive intake of the particular oxygen. Now another situation in chronic granulomatous disease this particular condition what happened NADPH oxidase enzyme which is involved in this respiratory burst or this particular killing of bacteria that is absent in macrophage and neutrophils so in macrophage and neutrophils this important enzyme is absent and that is leading to the chronic granulomatous disease so in this condition macrophage ingest the bacteria normally but cannot kill or destroy them so that is very dangerous situation but here one interesting fact is that staphylo particular streptococci and pneumococci that is two variant of the bacteria strepto and pneumo themselves produce h2o2 h2o2 will be produced by the bacteria so what happen macrophage will convert this h2o2 into hypochlorous acid with the help of myeloperoxidase enzyme because macrophage have mpo that is myeloperoxidase enzyme is present only nadph oxidase is not there Sir, sir, for this streptococci and pneumococci will be destroyed by the myeloperoxidase system of the macrophage. But staphylococci being catalyst positive, what happened? It this bacteria will detoxify H2O2 in the macrophage and therefore are not destroyed in such person. So NADPH oxidase is deficient, but that person will not have streptococci or pneumococcal infection. But once there is a staphylococci infection, that infection is not easy to cure so hence recurrent pyogenic infection by staphylococci are common in chronic granulomatous disease so you have to remember NADPH oxidase is deficient and then staphylococci infection then it is difficult to cure that particular infection so that is leading to the chronic granulomatous disease macrophage also produce nitrous oxide from arginine by the enzyme nitric oxide synthase this is an important antibacterial mechanism now peroxidation is also catalyzed by the lip lipooxygenase in platelets and leukocyte ionizing radiation 
डैमेज टिश्यू बाय प्रोड्यूसिंग हाइड्रोक्सिल रेडिकल हाइड्रोजन पेरोक्साइड एंड सुपर ऑक्साइड एन आयन सो आयोनाइजिंग रेडिएशन दैट इज़ अनदर रीजन फॉर द जनरेशन ऑफ द फ्री रेडिकल सो वी हैव सीन दैट मैक्रोफेज विच इज नीडेड फॉर द एंटीबैक्टीरियल एक्शन पेरोक्सीडेशन इज ऑल्सो कैटेलाइज बाय द लाइपो ऑक्सीजीनेस इन प्लेटलेट एंड ल्यूकोसाइड सेल्स नाउ आयोनाइजिंग रेडिएशन पर्टिकुलरली यू हेट रिमेंबर एक्स रे एंड यू वी रेज सो वॉट एपन वाटर मॉलिक्यूल वैन एक्सपोज टू द एक्स रे गामा रेज और यू वी रेडिएशन दैट विल जनरेट हाइड्रोक्सिल रेडिकल एंड अदर फ्री रेडिकल विल बी जनरेटेड सो इट इज वेरी डेंजरस एंड दैट कैन लीड टू द फ्री रेडिकल इफ एक्सेसिव एक्सपोजर इज दर नाउ लाइट ऑफ एप्रोप्रिएट वेवलाइन कैन ऑल्सो कोज फोटोलाइसिस ऑफ ऑक्सीजन टू प्रोड्यूस सिंगलेट ऑक्सीजन द कैपेसिटी टू प्रोड्यूस टिश्यू डैमेज बाय एच टू ओ टू इज मिनिमल वैन कंपेयर टू द अदर फ्री रेडिकल एंड बाई डेफिनेशन ऑल्सो एच टू ओ टू इज नॉट कंसिडर द फ्री रेडिकल सो इट इज बेनिफिशियल एज कंपेयर टू द अदर फ्री रेडिकल बट इट इज ऑल्सो डैमेजिंग बट इन प्रेजेंस ऑफ फ्री आयन वॉट एपन फ्री आयन मॉलिक्यूल दैट एच टू ओ टू कैन जनरेट हाइड्रोक्सिल रेडिकल सो समाइम एफ ई प्लस टू कंबाइन कं combine with this h2o2 and generate hydroxyl radical and that is called as a fenton's reaction and it is highly reactive molecule so h2o2 even in a small amount but combine with the ion free ion that can lead to the dangerous effect cigarette smoke and air pollutant also contains high concentration of free radical apart from that inhalation of air pollutant will increase the production of free radical all these when it is exposed will lead to the attraction of white blood cell in the respiratory tract and that can lead to the free radical generation as well as disease related to the respiratory tract so under hypoxic condition electron transport chain also produce nitric oxide and this nitric oxide and radicals generation that is called reactive nitrogen species now both reactive oxygen species and reactive nitrogen species create stress inside the cell low level of both will lead to the function in a hypoxic signaling pathway now sometime what happen hypoxic signal that is particular involved in a cancerous disease or cancerous condition which have significance in cancer and inflammation as well as some other disease so free radical are also playing important role as a signaling pathway particularly in hypoxic condition and that can also related with the cancer inflammation and other particular chronic disease so that's all about the free radical and their generation the clinical significance we will look in a next video so that's all about today's topic thank you